I have been receiving so many emails in the last few weeks, months really, since we launched the educator course that we are bringing to Australia and worldwide as well in collaboration with NALA, so the NALA Educator Certification Course. The questions are always the same. So I have decided I'm going to do a video like this one here, and I'm going to actually write a blog post about it. If you have ever thought about becoming a lash trainer, the questions that we get all the time, and I'm talking about Australia first, and then I talk about the rest of the world, is that what sort of insurance will cover me and do I need my training and assessment certificate? At the moment, nobody knows where the industry is going, yeah? There are courses, which is called a unit of competency. It is part of a beauty package, which is nationally accredited. There is something like that in Australia, yeah? That is the only thing there is. But as I said, you do not have to have that accreditation because it is so unregulated in Australia. In the sense of that, no, you do not need your training and assessment certificate, yeah? This is to answer question number one. The thing is though, if you are ever thinking about training others and you want to give them a certificate, that states on the actual certificate, it states that they have passed their course or that they are nationally accredited. You as a trainer cannot give other people or other students any certificates and say that they are now accredited. It is illegal to do so. So what we do with Lash Tribe at the moment, we hand out certificates and say, you have successfully passed the Lash Tribe requirements basically yeah it's a certificate of attendance now if you want to work for an rto a registered training organization or you are already working for one i know there's a few trainers in australia that work for tafe you need to have your training and assessment certificate if you have done your tae that's what it's called if you have done your tae a few years back it is no longer valid. It has been superseded by some new units that you have to add. I am in the process myself at the moment to do that as well. But it is very, very, very important to know your training and assessment certificate does not teach you how to be a lash trainer. And this is where it gets interesting. And this is where I don't understand where this whole board of advisors at the Australian government sits there and thinks that um, we need to have everybody who wants to train registered training, which is not that great, by the way, we need to have them have their TAE, their training and assessment certificate, even though it doesn't really teach you how to teach others lashes. So this is where the gray area starts. And this is where our or my Lash Tribe course comes in with Nala. I am showing people how to actually be a good lash trainer and what needs to be included in the curriculum. Whether you want to do your TAE or not really depends on if you ever want to train accredited training. That means now you need to come up with a training and you need to have that actually verified by the government. First of all, you deliver your own curriculum that you develop for your brand, like Lash Tribe, yeah? And then you teach it to others. So you include all of the knowledge that you know, everything you've learned over the years, and you put that into your own curriculum so that others can be the best possible lash artists. And for this one, you don't need your training and assessment certificate, but you cannot hand out uh, certificates that say that they are accredited nationally. Yeah, it's very, very similar in the UK, I believe. Number two is you develop your own curriculum, but you follow the guidelines of the government approved curriculum, which doesn't mean it is a good standard. It is very, very basic. And if you wanna be a good lash trainer and you wanna be well known in the industry, you need to teach more than what that accreditation offers because it's very, very basic, yeah, very basic. I can add another three days behind that and not be done teaching the stuff that I know, okay? So if you wanna be a good trainer, you can definitely do your TAE, you can write your own program, you need to get it accredited, first of all, and then you can teach others that very same course. 
and accredit them. Yeah, that means you're teaching a government accredited course. If you teach other things within this course, if you're teaching other stuff that's outside of the scope, they won't allow you to do that. What you need to do is you need to get your training manual that you wanna have approved by the government so that you can give accredited training out. You need to teach that on its own. Yeah, it has an assessment thing. It, it, there's a lot involved. It takes a long time, it costs a lot of money, but you can totally go through the process if you want to teach for TAFE or you want to hand out accredited certification. So you can offer that standalone accredited course, um, unit of competency, yeah, for lashes. It's called apply eyelash extensions, governmental terms. And then you need to tell your students, look, we have to do it that way, but if you want to learn how to do it properly, I would recommend you book another day on top of it. Yeah, but you can't have it be part of that accreditation. That is the thing, because if that student then goes back to the government and says, oh, this person taught me things differently than to that program, then you can get into trouble and you can lose your whole license. Option number three is you buy a course that is already accredited and you just have to redo your questions and everything like that because there is a certain form you have to follow a certain way that you have to follow and and do all of your your assessment yeah so you can buy something that's already there but you have to do your assessment and everything again the issue i have with accredited training is that it's very basic yeah and if it's basic you can add another day or two but then you have to tell the students that is not part of your actual accreditation process that is on top that actually teaches you how to do all the good stuff. If you wanna be a lash trainer and you are not doing accredited training and you haven't got your TAE, you will not be able to get insured. Insurance is what they wanna see is they wanna see that you are competent at training others, yeah? And their TAE, the training and assessment, provides the student with that. You need to do your TAE so that you can actually be insured. Insurance is the number one problem a lot of Salons are not insured. Yeah, that's bad, bad enough. But if you are a trainer, you need to have insurance and you don't need to just be insured here in the academy while you're training. So this is your academy, but you also need to be insured once your student leaves your academy and for example, does lashes on a client, that client goes blind for whatever reason, that student can now go back to you or to whomever then is sued and say, well, this person at this academy taught me how to do it and that's her fault and this is why my client is now blind. I was taught that way, yeah? It happens, unfortunately, and this is why you need to have insurance. Now, up until just recently, a lot of the insurances wanted, or still do, that you do your training and assessment certificate. Yeah, this is the reason. Now the thing is, and that's the joke about it, your training and assessment certificate doesn't teach you how to teach others lashes. And uh, another thing that provides the student with enough evidence that they are going to be able to be insured, which is the most important thing about training really, is the NALA educator certification course that we offer with Lash Tribe. So this is why I brought the NALA certification course over to Australia to teach you how to teach others how to do lashes properly. And I have partnered up with insurers, insurances that will insure you because they are very, very happy about the training curriculum that I have shown them. And many of the students who have attended at the academy, um, the training already, they are now insured with those two insurers, yeah? Some of them already had their TAE, some of them now don't have to get it, yeah? But that doesn't mean that one day, in the far future, I can't say if it's two months, two years, or 200 years, <laughs> that it doesn't mean that you need to have some accreditation course. They are the two only things in Australia, pretty much they are, that can make you be an insured trainer. So it's up to you what you wanna do. So I'll cover a little bit about the uh, overseas regulations. Now I know that the UK has very similar rules now there is insurances that will allow you to be trainers if you are doing particular lash training courses like i know that nala is allowed 
over there as well and then you're gonna get your NALA certificate from me and the Lash Tribe certificate if you do your course online for example if you live in the UK and then you can go to insurers that we can tell you which ones and then you can be insured and train others in lashing yeah and the NALA certification course uh, it is a day training yeah the live or in person but it covers so much more afterwards as well in groups um, and so there is the the whole step-by-step -step process of how you can actually write the best curriculum possible and when you finish writing your whole curriculum you can even hand it in and get that accredited by Nala directly not by Lash Tribe but by Nala because she deals Levi deals with all of the Nala accreditation process um, over in Canada, which it's worldwide, of course. And once you have done that, your manual will have like 300% more content than any other lash manuals out there, which is a great selling point, I would say. I don't know exactly what it's like in the US. I know in Canada, the Nala training is amazing as well. So if you wanna join from Canada, the live stream insurance is no problem. We can hook you up. Um, through Levi as well and any other countries leave me a comment below and we'll find out too Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention now Lash Tribe is in the process of I am updating my TAE at the moment uh, I will start once I come back from Hollywood and then I will be able to offer RPL recognition prior learning and I will also work together with an RTO to do that, obviously. And then I will also offer accredited classic beginners training. Now, the problem is that a lot of people now want accreditation these days. Um, and this is the only reason why Lash Tribe wants to offer accredited training. By the way, the only training that is ever accredited is actually classic Lash training. There's no volume accreditation, yeah? That is a specific extra technique that's like upskilling, okay? It's um, only for classic lashing. So if you wanna train others on lashing and you say, oh, I wanna offer accredited training, but you only re really wanna teach them volume, don't waste your time because there's no accredited training for volume, okay? Just on a side note. So this is what is the process now. Um, and by the end of the year, Lash Tribe will offer accredited classic training and RPL as well, and also some brow training, accredited brow training which is amazing anyway i gotta go now if you have any other questions just leave a comment down below bye